Hello everyone, welcome back to the ongoing series where I help you make your first TFs in Blender. In this tutorial, we'll be going over the wave effect, one of the most effective and easy ways to get a floppy flattening in your scene. So there are several ways to do this, this can be by model or by image plane. First, we'll go by image plane since that's the easiest. If you want to know how to get an image like this to be so 2D, I suggest checking out my other tutorial on nodes and transparency. So to get the wave effect working on a plane, it actually needs subdivisions on where it can bend and create the wave. So if you pick up the plane here and press tab to enter edit mode, press W, hit subdivide, you can subdivide it to your heart content. Just make sure you don't subdivide too many times, because otherwise you'll create lag. 30 should be just about enough, you can add more or less to your will. You can also increase the efficiency of your plane by going onto the face edit and deleting the faces that aren't, aren't used. Here I've selected all the faces that aren't used in a box like shape around Sophia. Delete those with faces, and now you've got a more efficient plane. With this new plane, it's as easy as going to the blue wrench, hitting add modifier and hitting wave. If I hit play now, you're going to see that you're going to get some wacky results. It's good to play around with these settings while it's playing so you can see what you're doing. The speed here obviously manipulates the speed, up to like a maximum of zero, which means it won't move at all. You can also go into minus speed, which kind of does this weird glitchy thing. Otherwise, you can edit the height, which is obviously how high it goes. The width and the narrowness are probably your main two you want to focus on. The width focuses on how fast it goes, while the narrowness is how often the waves appear. So if you manipulate these speeds uh, along with the width, you can get a nicer wave effect of what you desire. And eventually you get something like this. You can also disable X or Y coordinates so that they only wave in one direction. So here it's actually waving in both directions, creating a wobbly effect. But if I disable X, it'll only wave one way and disable Y the other way. Disabling both will just cause it to go up and down since it's not being manipulated in any axes. With that out of the way, we should probably focus on the main part, using a 3D model for the wave effect. Now Sophia here is one giant mesh. All her materials are separated into one mesh. This means that it literally is as easy as going to add modifier in the blue wrench section and hitting wave. This will give her the effect that you want, just like in the plane. However, that may not always be the case with your model. Sometimes your model, uh, visualized very clearly here, is in separate parts. So example, the head and the body and say like the feet could be a separate section. To merge them together, shift right click each one and then hit control J to merge them together. Sometimes the merging isn't exact. So for example, when you merge, two colors might mark morph into one. This is because they share the same name in the material tabs and all you'll have to do is change the material name before you go into uh, forging them. So for here, let's just say, you know, put pink, uh, that will stop it from merging with red if they shared the same name. Because for example, if you try to add a modifier to just one of the shapes, well, guess what, you're just going to modify one of the shapes. But when they are all merged together and then you add the modifier, it acts just like one shape. And you can see the materials in the top right here are all together, just like with Sophia's. Like this. Do note that the armature is still manipulatable whilst you're doing this. The armature acts like the mesh is still connected directly to it, so don't try and manipulate the armature to fit with the model that's waving. Finally, you have to be cautious about models you're flattening, because if you flatten them too thin, it can create errors when you're trying to use the wave effect. For example, if I make Sophia too thin here, you can see she starts having little artifacts with her skirt. This is because she's so thin that the materials are overlapping with each other, which you don't get with a plane since it's literally all just one thin layer. But a model has many different layers which can overlap if you're not careful. So yeah, by manipulating with the speeds, you can see you get the desired result you want. And you can basically get anything you want, really. If I want it one specific way, I can do that, and it's a very, very effective tool to create a wobbling animation effect very easily. And of course, it is animatable. So if I select the root bone here, and start dragging it away, there we go. We've got an animation going. Oh, you should be careful though, that moving an armature with the wave effect can manipulate how the wave effect works, since the wave effect is based on uh, axes, and if you're constantly moving those axes, then it's going to manipulate how it's working. This can be solved by applying the armature so the model is no longer connected to it, but then you won't be able to manipulate how the model moves. Take that as a warning before you advance on that. I should also mention that if you decide you want a very specific frame of her waving and just in a still form for like a picture, you can hit apply to the wave modifier and it becomes a stiff image of what it was, exactly where it was. 
So you can manipulate that however you wish if you just want to use it in a frame of an image rather than animation. So hopefully this tutorial will help you on your Blender creating. It's a very short and easy way to do flattening wave effects. And remember to keep on creating. Here I've selected all the here I've selected the box shape esque Here I've selected the box esque shape Here I've selected ah!